I think it's truly really a, 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 a huge, a huge story from a tiny woman. It's a huge exploit and, and really inspiring for, for all of us, black, white, uh, pilots, not pilots, but it's a real human story. So I think uh, with her determination and her fortitude to make something of herself, I think she has inspired everyone. Uh, abroad, keep on voting, keep on doing. So welcome everyone to our Democrats Abroad Toulouse webinar. We're celebrating the 100th anniversary of Bessie Coleman's acquiring an international pilot's license. She was the first woman of African-American and Native American heritage to do so. And as you know, today is June 19th. Today is Juneteenth. And as if you didn't know, uh, yesterday, President Biden signed into law a new federal holiday in honor of Bessie Coleman. And this is the first new federal holiday that's been created since 1983. And that was the year that Martin Luther King Day was, was created. Um, so uh, before, we, before we move on to, uh, to our program, I would just like to call everybody's attention to the fact that we're on Zoom and that we need a certain amount of Zoom etiquette. And the first thing we need to do is to mute. Right now, I can hear birds and papers being shuffled around. So uh, please mute your mics until the question and answer period at the end. And as I just indicated, we're, we're recording this webinar because we'd like to post this on the uh, DA YouTube channel. Uh, and if you don't want to be recorded or if you don't want people to see you, then you need to please uh, turn, off, turn off your webcam. Um, so today, our, our moderator is Beatrice Montu, and uh, Beatrice is a member at large of the Executive Committee of the Democrat Abroad Toulouse Chapter. And she is a senior training consultant in quality management and supply chain quality. Uh, at Air Business Academy, and she develops and delivers learning solutions for aviation manufacturers worldwide. So I will stop sharing my screen and pass the baton to, to Beatrice. Thank you. Beatrice, you're muted. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Scott, for this uh, very nice uh, introduction. Welcome to uh, our Democrat Abroad members and all the participants uh, from all across the world. Uh, we are here to celebrate, as we've already mentioned, the 100th anniversary of uh, Bessie Coleman's international license which is obviously a significant day today for all of us. Before we go on with the program, I'd like to acknowledge that this uh, beautiful event is the brainchild of Jeanine Johnson, former chair of the Democrat Abroad Toulouse chapter. And from what we understand, she got this wonderful idea back in January of this year uh, in the classroom with all of our students one of whom was obviously uh, talking about Bessie Coleman and saying that she earned the license in 1921. Janine Johnson has been very good in math. <laughs> Realized that it was the 100 year this year. 
and she said she would not let this pass by without making this a uh, momentous occasion for all to celebrate. So thank you again, Janine, for this wonderful idea. Thank Thank you, uh, Beatrice. Thank you very much uh, for being able to, to, to speak about that for me. Uh, I just want to say a few words. Unfortunately, I cannot join the um, conversation today because uh, something else uh, by happenstance was planned on the same day as this uh, event. And um, it turns out that it was a perfect day to have this on which we could have this event because it's Juneteenth and even more so because or thanks to um, uh, the fact that now this day is officially recognized as a national holiday in the United States. So even more so. So I'm really glad it's today, even though I cannot uh, stay with you all. Uh, I just want to say a few words, especially to the people who are um, participating, who are uh, our speakers. Uh, we appreciate so much the fact that you have decided to come along with us and, uh, and be a part of this beautiful event. So I really want to thank all, all of you from the bottom of my heart because uh, you're providing us a great deal of knowledge about uh, Bessie Coleman. We, in general, many people know a few things about her, but perhaps not enough. And, uh, and the fact that you're giving us uh, enlightenment on her enlightens us as well. This, uh, this um, conference is divided into a few different parts. Uh, there is Christine um, Debuzi who will talk to us about the uh, earlier period of time in aviation for women. Uh, so this is before Bessie Coleman and up to Bessie Coleman's time. And the reason why we have her to speak about this period of time is because it gives us uh, a uh, insight into the environment in which Bessie Coleman was going. I think it's really important for people to understand what the environment was like in the aviation, in the new aviation industry for women. And, and in order for us to comprehend just exactly what Bessie Coleman had decided to get herself into is best for us to really know that from an, an historical point of view. So she will discuss that for us. Afterwards, we will have um, Olivier Sahazan, who is the um, director of the French documentary uh, on, on um, Bessie Coleman. And so he will give us some insights into her different parts of her life. Colleen uh, will provide us uh, Colleen Berry, excuse me, who will provide us with information into the training that Bessie Coleman had. Uh, many of us just think of flying as flying. Uh, for those of us who are lay people, uh, of course, not the experts, but uh, it's absolutely incredible the things that she had to overcome, Bessie Coleman, in order to learn uh, about flying in an environment that was entirely masculine in another language, in another country, in another culture. So, uh, so listening to what, what Colleen has to provide us will really uh, give us greater insight into the environment in which she found herself. And then Olivier Sahazan will speak to us, uh, as I said, uh, about, um, about her life again. And uh, let's see, we also have Gigi, uh, the, the, um, uh, petite nièce, sorry, the, uh, um, Bessie Coleman is Gigi Coleman's, Coleman's, uh, great aunt. And so she will give us a few insights into how she feels her great aunt has, has inspired her as well as other people. And we will also have Françoise Sokel uh, at the end, 
who will tell us a little bit about a great event that is planned in September in, in honor of Bessie Coleman. So I'm not going to keep you much longer. Thank you so much, everyone for participating in this. Thank you to our um, to people who have come and who've joined us in order to listen and learn. And I'll leave the floor to you, Beatrice. Thank you very much. Thank you, you so much, Janine. So I think uh, with uh, this nice presentation of our participants, uh, we're going to, without further ado, uh, go ahead and present uh, the first uh, speaker uh, of the day. Uh, as Janine already mentioned, those are all passionate people who have a lot to uh, teach us about the multifaceted aspects of Bessie Coleman's house, life. Um, the first speaker is Christine Debouzy. Uh, just a little bit about Christine Debouzy, who's going to talk to us about the insight and conditions for women before and during Bessie Coleman's time. Uh, she's the president of the French Women Pilot Association. So she's a former airline pilot herself, like some of you here today in attendance. And she flew for Air France for 36 years. She began to fly at the age of 15 uh, during national summer camps with mainly gliders and some uh, air, air plane, airplane lessons. So she's devoted to increasing the number of women in flying sports as well as professional situation and activities in aviation. So we're very delighted to welcome Christine today. She assists the association to bring about, obviously, women pilots um, in connection to uh, aspiring uh, women who want to be pilot, to provide role models for young women and girls, uh, as well, obviously, as educating the entire public I at large. Uh, Christine? Vanessa Gibson, she is a um, pilot in Santa Monica, and she's uh, in the 99th Association, also very, very uh, fond of Bessie Coleman. <laughs> Thank you. Should I stop sharing my screen, yes. Scott, so that yes. uh, I will do that so that, Christine, you're able to uh, show your presentation. Yes, right. I'm very honored to be in this uh, presentation for this uh, great day, the 19th of June. And uh, this year we have had a lot of commemorations with our great pioneers, uh, French pilots like uh, Adrienne Bolon for her 100 years of crossing in Andes in South America. And uh, now her fellow is uh, Bessie Coleman. They were in the same school and they were friends. Uh, I will... Uh, give you some spots about the history of women in aviation. Next slide. 1784, Elizabeth Tibble on the center was the first to fly freely in Lyon at an altitude of 3,500 meters on a distance of three kilometers. 1798, the directory forbade two people of different sexes from flying in the same basket because the depression of the air was likely to affect the delicate organs of a fearful woman. Ernestine Henry asks the Academy of Science to comment on the robustness of the so-called fragile sex so that she can start her air shows again. The Minister of Interior ends up saying that we cannot prevent a fully grown woman from doing what men are allowed to do and from giving on the occasion of an ascent show proof of confidence while be in the process of uh, being fearless. 1805, Napoleon appointed Sophie Blanchard on the right. Uh, she had an accident at the end. The official arrestor of the empire because she was sending fireworks from the balloon. 28 August uh, 1906, Mrs. Surcouf on the left, top left of the pictures is the first female only flight. Can uh, we hear some noise? Could you please mute your mics, everyone? Uh, Mrs. Surkouf did the first female-only flight with Mademoiselle Gash. At, at, uh, two hours, 45 minutes flight from Saint-Cloud to Neuilly-sur-Marne. They founded the club La Stella, affiliated with the Aero Club de France on February 1909. 
where men were only admitted as don donors or passengers. The association organized stellates, conferences, artistic evenings, initiation flights for women and young people. The empire of the skies belongs to all, and who would dare deny that women have no right to conquer the stars? What a man manages to acquire through his mus muscular strength, through his physical endurance, women also conquer through her will, her tenacity and her courage, said Marie Surcouf. 1909, Marie Marvin succeeded in pressing the channel from Nancy to Southwood in two hours, 30 minutes. Next slide. Thérèse Pelletier, on the right, top right, a uh, sculpture, was the first woman to be released alone on an airplane in 1909. March 8, 1910, the Aero Club de France awarded Elise de Roche, 24-year-old actress, the pilot aviator patent number 36, first woman's world brevet. She declares, flying is the best possible thing for women. The Belgian Hélène Dutrieux, on uh, the down uh, left is the first woman to take a passenger by pl plane in April 1909. In the USA, Harriet Quimby, first pilot's li license on August 1911, joined the Mexico City Circus as a journalist made feminist propaganda. She also has a very concrete vision of aviation, which can become a profitable activity for women and even a source of good income by transporting passengers from city to city. Marie Marvin, June 1912, obtains the approval of an ambulance plane project on the center top pictures from the Direction de l'Aeronautique uh, Militaire. A collective of women calls on the National Aeronautical Lead to rule on the right to women to choose their path. 1915, Marie Marvin became the first woman in the world to carry out air combat missions from Mens Aerodrome. Thereafter, she will receive the Croix de Guerre. In Russia, Nadezhda Degdeva entered the Air Force under the identity of a 17-year-old boy, thanks to the complicity of a friendly doctor. In 17, 1917, the Russian army officially opens its door to women. 1915, Marjorie Stinson, the age 20 opened a family flying school and in San Antonio at for the Royal Canadian Flying Corps School. In the United States, the Secretary of State for War declares, no women in the army. 1916, Kitty Stinson was hired by the Red Cross for the airmail. Next slide. Women pilots were welcomed at Caudron School Think, thinking it would make their airplane famous. Despite rough instructor, women pilots succeeded. Adrienne Bolland, age 20 on the center, 24, sorry, crossed the most difficult part of the Andes from Mendoza to Santiago, April 1st, 1921. June 15, 1921, Bessie Coleman obtained the International Pilot's License number 18,310 becoming the first black woman to obtain it. She continued her apprenticeship for two months to learn aerobatics. September 16, 1921, she re-embarked from New York where she received ovation from the black and white American press. 1922, Adrienne Bolland was the first in the world to obtain the public transport certificate. In all irregularities, France is violating resolution 147 of the International Air Navigation Committee on the conditions of access to this certificate to be made. The intervention of Secretary of State for the, as well as a suffragist ended up allowing women to have a professional certificate. Out of revenge or societal influence, the International Commission prohibits companies from entrusting their passengers to women. Sophie Elliot Lynn, World High Jam champion and pilot opened the door to the Olympic Games for women in 1928. She succeeded on changing the resolution 146 and 147 on the International Air Navigation Commission, excluding women from any job on board commercial aircraft for physiological unfitness for an operational role. Passed to the public transport certificate, first in Iran, second in the world. 1928, the Air Club de France created a women's section 
to serve the cause of aviation through propaganda and the development of air travel by interesting women in matters of the air. Thank you. So why don't we proceed now? We have uh, another speaker who is going to give us a bit more information about Bessie Coleman's story before she actually uh, earned the pilot license, before she uh, came to France. For that, we're going to turn the mic to Olivier Sarrazin. Uh, who, Olivier Sarrazin to uh, give us some insight into her life before she uh, came to France. A little bit about Olivier. Olivier Sarrazin is French. Uh, she's a, he's a film director specializing in documentaries based in Paris and Lille. His work sheds new light into a lot of historical events. He stresses a lot of documentary that he has made in the past on the injustices or global environmental changes. So he has made a film about Bessie Colesman because he, as he will say himself, is fascinated by her story and her journey. And then he is here today to talk to us about her life as well as her legacy. Uh, so he will, I believe, also let us see two short clips uh, of, uh, of some of the movie of that film uh, that he directed. So without further ado, um, Olivier, welcome. I will turn on the uh, mic as well as the presentation to you. Olivier? Okay, first, Olivier, you need to unmute. And then I will un stop un sharing my screen. Sorry, sorry. So, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. I'm really, I'm really proud and really, uh, really happy uh, for, for your uh, invitation. And um, uh, maybe we, we, can, uh, we can start with a, a short, uh, short clip extract from my, my movie. Scott, I, I think you've yes. got it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'll uh, so we'll watch. I would watch, we'll watch the first excerpt that we have from Olivier's film. Bessie Coleman est née le 26 janvier 1892 à Atlanta, dans l'état du Texas. Elle est restée assez peu de temps là pour rejoindre et passer son enfance à Vaxahachie, où il y avait donc des plantations de coton. C'était l'or blanc. Bessie a commencé à 9 ans à ramasser les cotons, quelque chose de très éprouvant parce que ça pique. Il faut être courbé et il faut en faire beaucoup dans la journée. Donc euh, toute la famille s'y mettait, c'était la principale ressource. Bessie Coleman était euh, plutôt une élève studieuse, elle aimait bien apprendre, elle aimait lire beaucoup. Oh oui, yeah, she was a very avid, she was an avid reader and she loved her mathematics. She's good in math and she was a very Christian person. Uh, uh, she lived in a uh, three bedroom, well, three bedroom house with uh, 13 other brothers and sisters. And her mother, uh, Susan, raised her because her dad, George, he went back to an Indian territory to live. Le père ne supportait pas l'ambiance sociale, raciale, les réprimandes, l'humiliation. Et lui était donc trois quarts noir et un quart indien. Et l'Oklahoma, c'est un territoire indien, donc... Il a préféré partir, mais euh, sa femme et ses enfants ne l'ont pas suivi. And of course she missed her dad, but he told her, Bessie, don't let nobody tell you what you can and you cannot do. You can do whatever you want to in life. And she kept that with her, you know, through her whole life, you know. He had to do what he had to do for himself, and she had to do what she had to do, staying with her mother and help her mother with her other brothers and sisters. So as you 
as you have seen, uh, Basie's uh, Basie's father had to had to left the, the the family, and it was something uh, quite dramatic for uh, for Basie. Uh, first of all, you have to to imagine that at this time in Texas, it was worse to be half uh, Native American than being an African American, and if if he had to 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 go, it was maybe for for his life's sake. So uh, Basie stayed with, uh, with uh, her mother and uh, with uh, 13, uh, 13 uh, brothers and sisters. And unfortunately, uh, as there were some who were really, really um, uh, babies, she, she, she had to, to, to nurse them. And then she, she don't go to, she don't get to the school so often as, as she liked. But, Many sometimes later, in uh, when she was eighteen, she enrolls uh, at the normal university of agriculture for for blacks. It was a a, a, a coral school, uh, and uh, um, but after after a year, she she had to to return to work with her mother as a as a landress. Uh, in the time. Uh, we were under the, the, the Jim Law, uh, Jim Crow laws. That was really hard segregation laws, and it, all the all the African American people have absolutely no uh, some rights, but absolutely no uh, were not allowed to 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 live like uh, like the others. So it was it was uh, in the South. It was really really hard, and at the at the age of, of 23, she decided to uh, to go to, to Chicago, to Chicago where two of her brothers are, 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 were living. There was, a, there was a one called John, and John was the, <laughs> the, the cook of Al Capone, you know, the man of the, the, man of the, of the mafia. And, and the other was, uh, was George, and he was, um, he was working on, on train, on Pullman train. Uh, so she, she, she lived with, uh, with them in Chicago, and she became a manicurist. At this time, we are in uh, 1915. Uh, World War One has started in uh, in Europe and in, in France, and there's one one character uh, which his name is uh, Eugène Bullard. He's an American uh, American soldier, but he's engaged in the French army, and he became the the first black pilot in the French army. And so everyone in America. See everyone, every African uh, African American people in America see this man like, like a symbol, like something extraordinary. And of course, bases too. Uh, several several years, sorry, several years later, uh, when uh, when his brother come came from uh, from from the war, uh, she uh, he says to 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 her, well, oh, it friends, it's it's incredible. I've seen uh, I've seen women, women which are uh, airplanes pilots. And uh, so Bessie, uh, Bessie wanted to dis do something of her life. She doesn't know exactly what, but when she, she heard this, she said, okay, I want to be one of this, uh, this woman. I want to be the first African-American, African Native American woman to earn a, a, a pilot license. And then she, she tried to, to, to find an air, air school a tool to, uh, to learn how, how to fly, how to pilot. But unfortunately, at this time, it was absolutely impossible because one, she was a woman, and two, she was a full American. So in, the, in her job as a manicurist, she encounters uh, many, many people. And one of these uh, uh, people, one man, uh, was uh, Robert Abbott. Robert Abbott was a lawyer, and Robert Abbott was a billionaire man who is the founder of the Daily Chicago Defender. And, uh, and Robert, an Afro-American, uh, says to Basie, hmm, maybe, maybe I, can, I can help you, I can give money to you, but you know, if you want to, 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 be a, if you want to become, a, become a pilot, you have to go in France because it's in France that you, you would be allowed to, uh, to pilot a plane. But you have to learn French because all the instructions that will be given to you will be in French. So Bessie went to the um, um, 
Berlitz Bell, School in, in Chicago, and he came to, to, to learn French. Uh, uh, at the same time, she, she continued to, to, to work and to, uh, to keep uh, money apart to, to so co-finance her, uh, her, her journey to, to France. And finally, she, she take a, she take a boat uh, from, uh, from New York on uh, November, um, on, uh, yes, November uh, 2020, 20, uh, 90, 90, 20, sorry. And, and she went to France. And now I think that the, my dear Colin will, uh, will tell you that the, the suite of the story. Yeah, uh, for uh, this uh, wonderful uh, rendition of uh, Bessie's life before coming to France. Before we give the mic to uh, Colleen, uh, Colleen, why don't I introduce Colleen a little bit. Again, it's uh, one of our participants and speakers who has a lot to tell us about how uh, Bessie became a pilot. Uh, Colleen Berry, it's a pseudonym and an author. Uh, she's the uh, visual artist and designer. Uh, she's French and her real name is Anne Vernier. Uh, she's also uh, wrote about uh, the aviatrist Adrian Boland uh, since 2009. And in 2020, she uh, has a uh, brand, 12 Beast Editions, uh, devoted to that. So she creates and makes. Uh, whole portfolio of objects uh, linked to obviously the uh, aviation world, specifically the French uh, aviation world and also international matters as well. Welcome, Colleen. Um, and uh, yeah. next to you for this presentation. <laughs> well, as you, as you know, French is a very, very difficult language to learn. So thank you for having me uh, here and welcome in the Bessie Coleman's new life as a pilot. So I will now present you my presentation, which is divide, which is divide into parts. I, yes. Do you see it? Yes. Yes. You Coming see on. It. Oh. So welcome in the. And now, if I, do you see it? Well, yes. Yes. Yes, we see it. Yes. Okay. So, 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 my presentation is divided in two parts. First one, a arrival, and second, a stage training. When Bessie Coleman, uh, so I hope uh, it will. Uh, Yes, when Bessie Coleman arrived from Texas, U.S. in France, in Paris, in 1920, she went to issy les moulineaux south of France, which, south of France, to enroll as a student in the flying school of the planes builder René Caudron. She didn't know absolutely what it will happen to her. There were only three flight schools in France which accepted women, but two of them were too far from Paris. The school of Gilbert Sadier, as you see, was located near Clermont-Ferrand, and that of Auguste Maicon was in Nice. So, doo -doo -doo. perhaps Bessie Coleman had heard of Elise de Roche, the world's first wow. female card holder. You, you see it? Yes? Yes. Yes. And female world record older with 4,800 meters in 1990. An aviatrix who died in Le Crotois in a prototype of the Caudron G3 while someone else was at the control. It's very important. Elise de Roche wasn't at the command of the Caudron G3 when she died. Bessie knew in any case, that Adrienne Bolland nicknamed the Linus by René Caudron because of her very strong personality had preceded her in this school and that she soon, she would soon leave for South America and perhaps cross the Cordillera of, of the Andes at the command of this aegean. So everything was possible. One thing is certain. 
Adrienne Bolland was not there when Bessie Coleman arrived at the FI, at the airfield, at the factory, and in the buildings of the famous aviation French oh. firm. Once she had signed a student pilot contract, she took the train at Gare du Nord, arrived at the Crotois station, certainly walked on the main street as far as the Hotel de la Marine, and then she passed in front of the church. She probably admired the casino and the wonderful and large hotel on the beach, which were, which were constantly flown over by aerial vehicles of all kinds. This is where her plane would land nearby, th three kilometers north of the village, in the land boat of its school and hangar. On the immense beach of Le Crotois in Picardy, Bessie Coleman therefore discovered the hangars and perhaps had the same instructors as Adrienne Bolland just once year before. The staff of the flight school was composed of a principal, a chief pilot, four pilot instructors, a technical instructor and 30 mechanics. The staff was the same as when Adrienne Bolland did her training. Betsy Coleman was also the only female student pilot, and of course, the only woman of color in France to want to become a pilot. You can imagine the astonishment of all these men present when she arrived one day one. Before obtaining a pilot lessons, the young American did the five classic stages of apprenticeship program. On the first day, she did her first flight for 15 minutes aboard the G3, and you must know that this engine was a very particular one. It was used for the training of pilots and for aerial photography during the First World War, and it was provided with rudimentary controls. A wooden broom handle, which was used to steer the machine, a throttle and a lifter. It's sesky plans wings, greater lens of the upper planes allowed it to glide in the event of an engine failure and the G3 Codron was always with engine failures. During the next phase, Betsy seated herself in front of the instructor in the rolling plane colloquially called a taxi or a penguin because of the, its movement, which was a G3 equipped with a 45 HP engine. I detail it. With a surface area of reduced fenders and an additional set of wheels attached to the front to avoid rolling over. To further reduce the risk, the penguin straddle was limited in its travel. Much better. So she learned how to taxi, which consisted of long straight lines performed at high speed. In this area, like you see, this maneuver was made easier by the kilometers of beach, which was bare at low tide for a good part of the day. During the third phase, she familiarized herself with takeoffs and landings in a G3, called G3 called takeoff, which also had its throttle locked in to limit speed, and this plane could take off only two or three meters above ground. Then came the period of flight with a dual control monitor, and her monitor told her the most important is she must never let go of the control, never, never. So Bessie was finally able to discover the Cotroi from the sky, and she really learned to perform takeoffs and landings. Then she started to do turns, first wide winds, the in then increasingly tight. A few days later, she experienced a new emotion, a solo flight. In addition to the defined number of flight hours, the pilot license she passed included essential theoretical and practical knowledge. Bessie Coleman became familiar with air resistance, fluid mechanics, principles of flight, aerodynamic, and she had to know all the elements she, what, that make up in, in an airplane, the propeller, the wings, tail, controls, and all in French, you must give, uh, 
have have it in your mind and all with the old Picardy and very strong accent. The causes of malfunctions and breakdowns were also in this teaching. She had to know how to disassemble and reassemble all parts of the plane, including the entire motor, like you see. She learned how to adjust the canopy and tail and made routine repairs. Her knowledge included meteorology, aeroplane signals, national and international traffic rules, map reading, orientation, tuning, different terrains encountered, types of reactions to break down the weak or serious, altitude, reconnaissance, and choice of emergency, landing fields while taking the wind in, into account. She also explored how best to prepare for the longer, how long flights and set altitudes between 200 and 2000 meters. Finally, Codon Flight School gave us a precious certificates she needed to start a new life. And don't forget all of this in French. It's, I think it's perhaps thanks to the handling of such a unique G3 that the desire to fly about was born in her mind. Her spirit was now placed under the wings of Le Crotois of France and of the hope of surpassing her own limits. She tried and she done it successfully. So I think we can all say thank you, Ms. Bessie Coleman, our Bessie, my Bessie, my Bessie, me Bessie Coleman, for doing what you did and always smiling. And now, if you are Okay, I can show you my surprise. That is, I think, I hope you will see it. Yes. Da 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 da. Yes. Da -da. Ah. Mm. Can you see me? I would like, I would like you to see me. We can see you. Yes, but in a uh, big one, you know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, after creating, after create. Ah. Uh -huh. Don, you know. Oh, okay. wow. Yes. Which one was like that and like that? I created. Oh, great. Coleman. My, my uh, in French first, <laughs> in big one and teeny one. Yeah, that's great. Yes, it's my gift for, yes. for celebrating this moment with you. Thank you. That's a great surprise. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Pauline. And it will be in the in the museum in the in the um, Hydraviation Museum in Biscarros soon. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Colina. Thank you. Thank you. Very expensive. Thank you, Bessie. Thank you, Bessie. Thank you. A lot of inspiration, learning all of our uh, achievements all the intelligence and resilience and uh, determination that uh, yes. Bessie Coleman has uh, exhibited throughout her lifetime. Yes. Uh, we're going to continue on uh, to yes. give you more information about Bessie Coleman. The next uh, part of it is what happens to Bessie after she earned her uh, international pilot license. And to that, for that, we're going to give the floor back to um, Olivier. Yes, absolutely. So at, at the age of uh, at the age of 29, uh, Bessie obtained the international pilot license, uh, becoming the first black woman to, to obtain it. And she stay uh, she stayed two months uh, in France, where she learns uh, more uh, more acro 
robotics figures, and also she went to she went to Paris. She was near near the the, the sea at Le Cotois. She went to Paris and she enjoyed Paris. She enjoyed the city and especially the the city by by night. And um, and on September um, 16, uh, 1921. I, I don't know if you can can you see me. <laughs> No, we have to maybe have uh, have uh, Colleen to stop sharing your screen, please. Colleen, can you maybe stop sharing your screen so that we can see Olivier? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> So she, she re-embarked for, for New York uh, in, uh, in 1921. And there, uh, of course, Robert Abbott and all the, 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 the black and white uh, press were uh, were waiting for her, and it was really. An, uh, she was. Um, she she received a, an ovation, uh, a, a huge ovation. Uh, she she went in uh, in Broadway after uh, after a play, and everybody on the on the on the the, the hall uh, raised up for a, for a, 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 an ovation, um, but she uh, she began uh, perform perform uh, some some air shows but realize she, she has not enough experience so she went back on february february 1922 in france where she began two months of uh, of training of advanced flying with uh, ace pilots of world world one and after uh, she uh, she left to meet the aircraft manufacturer anthony Fokker in amsterdam uh, where she uh, she learned uh, so, so many other other things. Uh, she left to, for Germany to meet to meet her man. She 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 were in, in Berlin and uh, and finally she's back in uh, in August uh, in August 1922 in uh, the United States and uh, and she participated in a, in a air show in uh, Memphis organized of course by the Chicago Defender, but. She's now she's now a star. She's now well known, uh, but it's not it's not what she wanted exactly. What she wanted was to to emancipate her community and emancipate women and create a school. Create a school where all uh, all boys and girls, Afro American boys and girls, could least could learn how to to fly and. That will be his uh, his dream for for a long long years. Um, you know, even if she had a, a pilot license at this time, there is no commercial aviation, there is no postal aviation. So she she uh, she can uh, she could make make air shows and so on, but not uh, not having money to 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 to. To, to live with it, so she uh, she joined a, a band of of, of pilots uh, when it was um, where where it was it was called the, the the flying circus and it was a band of of pilots who do uh, who do dangerous acrobatic shows in the in in the sky with planes they they spin they they uh, and they also. Um, Recreate what they do when they were when they were pilots in World War One. They they, they, they um, recreate fighting in in the sky. So for for the the, the, the five years um, going, she she uh, she works uh, like like this uh, in, in uh, many many towns in uh, in the USA, uh, and she also also give uh, many many conference. And as uh, as soon as possible, she always uh, always met uh, school school boys, school girls uh, to to try to, uh, to to give what she 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 had this passion of, of aviation and always wanted to to create this school. Finally, finally, she 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 was able to buy a, a plane. It was the first piece of of his dream, his own plane to create his own school. But unfortunately, uh, she has no money enough, and she uh, she buy a huge a huge airplane, uh, an old airplane that was a, a Curtis. So uh, she. Um, uh, before she, she, she get his plane, she, she, um, 
it's, it's exactly the, the day to, to, to say it's on, on, on June 19, uh, 1925, so for Juneteenth, she celebrates the, 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 the Freedom Day in, in Texas for, for, for slave people and, uh, and uh, began a conference and an air show tour uh, in, in Texas. And um, after uh, after a while, the next next year, she was invited to uh, to Jacksonville in Florida, and had to uh, to, to do something really special that uh, she wanted to to take off with this plane with a pilot, and then jump out of this plane to uh, to to, um, um, to to put herself. Precisely on, on the point in the in the airfield with a parachute, um, so they had to make a rehearsal. And in the in the morning of the 13th of April 1926, uh, she uh, <clears throat> she take off with, with uh, her pilot, and they turn over the the, uh, the 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 airfield. But she was uh, she was a little woman. She was not a tall woman, so uh, she didn't. Attach his uh, his belt, and because she had to to look upon the, the the cockpit to 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 see precisely where she 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 will have to 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 jump, and unfortunately it's dramatic. At this moment, the old plane had a big problem, and suddenly the plane uh, the plane uh, nosed down, and uh, and take accelerate, and so the poor Bessie, she she's uh, she was. Um, uh, she she fall she fall from from the plane and she fall to his death on the on the hair film and at the same time the pilot can't take control of the plane and the pilot crashes himself with with the plane and burned in the in in, in a field that's not not so not so far so it's really hard she 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 was really really near to, 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 to achieve his, uh, his mission, to, to, to create his school, to begin a new life. She was only 30, 34, and, and she dies here in, in Florida. But two years later, two years later, because his death was a big emotion in all, all the country for, for African-American people, but for, for white people also. And two years after, the first uh, first flying school who uh, who accept uh, Afro American uh, pupils uh, was called Bessie Coleman School. So that's uh, as a, as a director uh, when I uh, when I discovered the story, which is uh, practically unknown uh, unknown in, in France. I was really really impressed by by, by this strong woman by. A strong woman who wanted to de- do things not for only for not for her but for whole a community, and she always fight to emancipate his community, emancipate women, and emancipate Afro American uh, in the, in the United States. So I think it was it was really important to 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 uh, to project a, a documentary film about uh, about her, and I was helped really strongly by Jacques Béal. Uh, Jacques Béal, who, who, who was, is dead now, who was uh, the first and only biographer of Bessie Coleman in France. So Jack went to, to, to Chicago, Jack went to the, the office of the, of the Chicago Defender and saw the place where Bessie lived and, and, and so on, and, uh, and uh, gave me a lot of information. And I, I've had the, the, the the happiness uh, to 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 go myself in Chicago to, uh, to, uh, to to for for my shooting, and then to meet Gigi Coleman, which is uh, with, with us uh, today, uh, the little niece of, of Bessie Coleman, and she she gave me the the honor to be to be in my film too. So I think it's really a, a, a huge a huge story from a tiny woman. It's a huge exploit and and really inspiring for for uh, all of us black white uh, pilots, not pilots, but it's a real human story. And if you, if you, if you like, I would propose to see a, a second extract, a short clip of, uh, of, my, of my movie. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you. 
So one thing good that happened with the death was that, um, you know, they opened up that aerial school called the Bessie Coleman Aerial School. And uh, William Powell out of Los Angeles formed it. And out of that school came Black Pilot. So her legacy, you know, she died, but her legacy is still alive. These are photographs of the pilots, the second generation of pilots after Bessie Coleman. These people were all inspired by Bessie Coleman. You can see lots of women pilots. This is Willa Brown. She's the one that made it possible for African-American pilots to be pilots in World War II. So Cornelius Coffey and Willa Brown ran a school here in Chicago, and you can see that the school is integrated. And this was all inspiration from the original Bessie Coleman. I think we should uh, all learn this history and be inspired by it. I was. Thank you for that, Olivier. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Olivier. Could you tell us, please, who the man in front of the pictures next to the truck was speaking? Who was speaking there? Do you yes, know? his name is Umberto Rico. And Umberto Rico is an engineer and a, and a pilot. And as, uh, as Gigi uh, does uh, with, a, with his truck, he, uh, he tried to sensibilize to, 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 with sensibilize. Uh, people and young people of, of the story of, uh, of the, um, the Afro-American getting in, uh, in aviation in, uh, in the United States. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That legacy really lives on. Now, I think uh, we have heard about uh, Gigi since the beginning of this event. It's almost uh, five o'clock at least on French time. Um, it's uh, early in morning in the, in the US. So Gigi uh, has been gracious enough to uh, attend this meeting and be with us today. So Gigi uh, is a great uh, niece of uh, Bessie Coleman and also a fervent admirer and ambassador of a legacy. So we'd like, uh, since we have Gigi with us today, have us say a few words about how Bessie Coleman has inspired her and her family in all our activities right now. Gigi, thanks again Hello. for having us. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm so happy to be here in France. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say uh, Bessie Coleman has inspired me um, and I think the whole world to accomplish your goals in life. Don't let no one tell you what you can and you cannot do. You can do whatever you want to in life. Um, she is very inspirational as far as uh, being a mentor to young people to enter into the field of aviation, to see what's out there. Um, you know, if Bessie Coleman could achieve her dreams in life, uh, to pursue aviation in the 1920s. The door is wide open for young people to do whatever they want to in life. So I think uh, with her determination and her fortitude to make something of herself, I think she has inspired everyone. Um, we're celebrating Juneteenth, which is like, such a wonderful thing for African-Americans and really the whole world. Uh, the freedom that she said she felt when she was up in the sky. Now we can all feel that freedom on the ground. So it's just a wonderful thing. Um, I'm keeping Aunt Bessie's legacy alive, like my mother, Marion Coleman. Um, she petitioned a postage stamp in her honor in 1995. Um, uh, also my grandmother, a uh, little bit of history, she was Aunt Bessie's uh, baby sister. She was the 13th, and her name was Georgia Coleman. And um, my Aunt Bessie was the 10th child. 
And um, how I'm keeping her legacy alive is um, I, I do a one woman presentation and I go all over the country telling Aunt Bessie's story. Uh, Aunt Bessie, she received her pilot license, so many people don't know, two years before uh, Amelia Earhart. So Aunt Bessie inspired Amelia Earhart. She got her license 18, uh, 18 years uh, after the, uh, the Wright brothers' initial flight. So, so many things have happened, you know, because of Bessie Coleman. Uh, we also, I started an aviation program and Oliver came and he videotaped my students. It's called the Bessie Coleman Aviation All-Stars here in Chicago. And our main goal is to teach young people about careers in aviation, how to fly airplanes, the history of what our people had to go through in the field of aviation to get involved in, in, in aviation. We also get the kids their uh, glider certification from the FAA. And we're also getting the students their drone certification so that they can get some of these jobs working for UPS and FedEx and things of that nature. Um, I'm excited because this is a hundredth year anniversary and we're going to do a 10 city tour under the leadership and chairperson of Dr. Sheila Chamberlain, who's the first African-American female intelligent pilot. So I'm so happy to have her on board. And my aviation board members, uh, Gloria Blaylock and uh, William Cummins and Derek Henry. And of course, my inspirational husband, uh, David Quinn. So we're going to start this tour um, in September, and we're going to fly where Bessie Coleman uh, went. We're going to do the tour in Long Island, New York, and we're going to do all the various cities that Bessie Coleman uh, uh, went to. We're going to give a scholarship for our aviation students. We're trying to raise money, and we're going to give a scholarship for each person. Well, try to give a scholarship for each student who's interested in aviation one in each city that we go to so i'm so excited about that and we're going to end up in perry rue rue france where bessie actually received her pilot license we're going to try to come there june 15th 2022 because of the pandemic you know we had to push everything back but we're that's our goal we're going to have hopefully have a big celebration and I really need all your support. Uh, you can go to our website, www.bessiecoleman's 100th year.org, uh, and look us up. We're looking for support, donations. We want all the airlines to be involved. We want all the French, everywhere that Bessie went. You know, she had to go to Germany, Amsterdam. We want to go all abroad because it's not just about Bessie. It's about all our young people all over the world so that they can strive and make something of their lives. And just, just remember, Bessie in 1918, she had to don the mask, you know, and she survived the Spanish flu and will survive this pandemic. And I just wanna thank you so much um, for having me and uh, letting me speak. And Gemma Bell and Bessie Coleman just adores avions. And you know French what I said. <laughs> Bessie Coleman, she loved to fly airplanes. Au revoir. Maybe. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Maybe. Gigi. Yeah, Thank maybe you. Gigi, stay a little longer if you can, maybe yeah. yes, for the question, yes. question okay. and answer and period. Answer period. Yes, yeah, very inspiring your speech as well and the uh, energy that you're exhibiting on behalf of your great aunt, really the ambassador that she really deserves. Thanks a lot Thank for you. being with us today. Thank you. So we are continuing with this very uh, inspiring journey through uh, Gigi has uh, already told us uh, how uh, Bessie touched the world. Uh, we're going to know more about her legacy through Christine's eyes and Christine has more to uh, share with us. Uh, so Christine, I'm going to uh, yield the floor to you. Okay. Again. 
Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, Gigi, you really have uh, Bessie's jeans <laughs> with so much energy. Bravo, bravo. And uh, if we can help you, we will do uh, maximum. And welcome in France when you want. Uh, I will continue with uh, history uh, after um, 1935. Uh, Jean Batten, a New Zealander uh, on the center of the picture, who raided Australia in England, set a world record in 1935 in South America, became life officer in the Air Force. Maris Bastier, on the top uh, left and right, will be the first to receive the trophy of the International League of Aviators. She did the flight Dakar Natal across South Atlantic round trip in uh, December 1936, but was never hired by Air France. American aviatrix, tired of not being recognized as such, meet at Curtis Field and have the idea of creating the 99s in 1929. We have uh, one member of 99. <laughs> Today. Very quickly, they organized the YAA, YIAA a race to protest against the decision of the National Aviation Agency to ban women from all speed tests. Women uh, pilots campaign uh, flight for women's suffrage. In France, Louise Weiss, feminist journalist, organized a rally in favor of the vote for women aviatrix in 1934. Hélène Boucher declares, we fly Rafale, but we are still minors. Are we more than our male comrade immune to accidents and all the hazards of the earth? Yes, we are feminists because feminism is synonymous with justice and equity for us. Hélène Richer became the world's first female airline pilot at Central Airline in late December, 1934. The National Union of American Airline Pilots declares the strikes against recruiting women who could uh, take the bread out of their mouth. The U.S. Department of Commercial Aviation is figuring out a rule under which women could only fly on commercial lines in good weather. <laughs> Ellen Richie, tired of fighting, resigns to set speed records again. Next slide. Uh, no sound. Okay. On law, a law on Ju July 1938 on the country in time of war provides the recruitment of women into the armed force. Many women pilots like Madeleine Charnot vigorously defended the creation of a female auxiliary air force. In France, a decree of September 1939 authorities only authorizes only four female volunteers to provide on pair air escorting. For one of them, Claire Roman, base commander wrote this report. Pilot guts, soldier discipline, doing a man's job better than a man. The Pétain government, which advocates work, family, country, suspends the recruitment of female auxiliary air pilots. The Polish women pilots were urgently requisitioned by the Air Force following the brutal German attack. In England, Pauline Gower trained and took command of a female section of courrier within the air transport auxiliary in November 1939 at Hatfield, the League of Defense of the Man protest for the usurpation of jobs, specifically male. The women pilots are paid much less than the men. However, the lack of pilot increases the power of this unit, which passes to 166 female pilots and 51 types of war machine, recruited from everywhere, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, etc. In USA, a new unit, un unit created by Nancy Love in 1942, the Women Auxiliary Fairing Squadron, their leader, Colonel Tuner, say, will say, the machines do not realize that it is a woman who is piloting. Jacqueline Koshran competes with her by creating WASP, Women Air Force Service Pilot. In the USSR, women showed terrible strength, strength in combat with the Yaks, the Sukhoi, in 1942, they carried out 4,419 interception missions with 40% victories. The Romanian pilot joined them in 1940 with the White Squadron. In France, at the end of 1944, Charles Tillon, Communist Minister of the Air at the first Charles de Gaulle government, decided to create the first corps of female military pilots. Due to change of government, it has then been suspended. The British women's section was closed in September 1945 at the end of the war. Go back to your kitchen. 
Uh, next slide. This, uh, sometimes women, women these guys are hired uh, from their family to fly. This is the case of Elizabeth Bozelli in the center, whose family was opposed to her becoming a pilot and who became the first French fighter pilot. Suzanne Jana on the right, a distinguished pilot from Indochina, began to learn to fly behind the scene of her parents. She carried out 290 sorties, including 86 missions of war during the conflict. In 1946, following the accident of Marie's Hill during a storm in the Jura, the state invokes budgetary problems to once again stop the female corps of military pilots. They are then offered to be typists at the Air Force, which they refuse. Outright, while Air France is recruiting IPSA as air hostesses. 1949, André Duperron took off from Mont Marsan to Baluchistan to try to beat Amelia Earhart on a distant record. On her arrival in France, she will receive the Legion d'honneur at 45 years old, called the Flying Grandmother. Jacqueline Oriol, after a dramatic accident as a passenger on a test flight, became a, um, became a military public transport pilot and then in 1952, a jet pilot. She becomes the first female test pilot. And then Jacqueline was in competition with Jacqueline Koshran, was luck lucky to be initiated by Chuck Yeager and passed the sound barrier United States in May 1953. Next slide. New generations of pilot uh, Embark with modern device. Betty Miller crosses the Pacific with a single Piper Comanche. Jerry Cobb, then for the space, became the first feminine subject for the selection of astronauts in 1960, where she passed all the tests. And John Glenn, uh, the astronauts represented by Alan Shepard, and John Glenn refuses missions with women, saying they see no use in space unless they are women superior to men. 1963, the USSR sent the first female cosmonaut to space, Valentina Tereshkova. Aeroflot entrusts its Ilyushin to exclusively female crews. In France, the decree that stipulated that you had to be male to take airline pilot training is repealed in 1973, spurred on by the French Association of Women Pilots created in 1971. American women pilot aspirants demand justice over their equality in education. On the military side, the law excludes women from combat missions. The limit of the concept of combat remains to be defined. They win their case to join the US Navy. 1975, President Ford endorses a bill which opens wide the doors to military academies to women. In France, they installed, they installed maximum quotas, afraid having too much women. The director of NASA said in 1972 that we must wait for ships to become habitable and for sexual morals to evolve. Later, he will declare that it will take a women auxiliary of space for the physical and moral good of the men and will select 12 young and pretty astronauts. 1978, NASA selected 28 men and six women. The shuttle have become a laboratory. The selected candidates are from the scientific elite. The institute said code between the anti-machist leagues, which recover to their benefit, the entry of women into the last phallic benchmark and the moral majority treating it as shame of America. Candidates like Shannon Lissid, mother of three, doctor of biochemistry, will maneuver the 15 meters arm of the station, but she's paid less than her male colleagues. 1984, the Russians sent a woman to space in extravehicular Svetlana Savitskaya. But since 1983, the Americans have caught up well and sent 65 women in space missions. 1987, first black American astronaut, May Jemison, in the center of the picture, inspired by Bessie Coleman. In 1999, Ellen Collins piloted Discovery and became the first shuttle commander. Then a female mission could not be held due to a lack of space suits for the women. Until the peak for women's participation in space came in 2019, 
With the successful mission launch on an all-female crew by, led by Jessica Mayer and Christina Koch on the top center. It took 70 years from the time of the first black woman pilot, Bessie Coleman, until the first African-American airline captain. That's too long. It has to improve and take off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Such a rendition of uh, how far we've come and how far we still have to go. Uh, thanks again. Uh, if we're going to go back to the program, we still have, uh, before we start the question and answer, we have uh, Francoise uh, Suckle, uh, who's uh, here to tell us about more events in store about Bessie Coleman this year. Thank you, Francoise, again, for being with us today. Francoise Suckle is a glider pilot and she's responsible for activities like the uh, Abbeville Bay de Somme Aero Club in Picardy in Northern France. She's a member of the French Association of Women Pilots as well. So uh, thank you, Francoise, for uh, attending this event. Good afternoon. It's a big honor for me to invite me. Uh, the Aero Club Abbeville Bunny Bay de Somme is very close Le Crotois Beach. And uh, my association, Les Ailes de la Baie, invite you to an open house operation with the following program. It's normal for us to celebrate the centenary of basic Almat pilot license first Afro-American woman to obtain a license from the Codron Brothers Flying School. A meeting room in our club will be inaugurated in his honor. Film, slideshow, recordings and lectures on Basie and the pioneer of aeronautics will be organized in situ and in various towns of the community of communes. Graduation ceremony to the event student of the Aero Club and with presentation of the air profession, more particularly related to health protection and the rescue of goods and people. Inauguration of the club's new microlight static presentation of the club aircraft and presentation of the flight school with training in the aeronautical initiation certificates, basic certificates and private pilot license, airplane and glider flight simulator. Please, Come to Abbeville with us in September the 17th and 18th this year. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Francoise, for this uh, warm invitation. Well, this uh, ends our list of speakers for this afternoon. Now we're going to go on a uh, very much awaited question and answer uh, for this event. Uh, we still have a few minutes to go and we still have a lot of participants who are, uh, want to share and communicate with our speakers. So we'd like to um, open the mic uh, for that to happen. Uh, Meredith Wheeler, Meredith, can we... Uh... Okay, from what I understand, there's no questions at this point. Um, from our participants. So maybe some of you want to say a few words uh, before uh, we adjourn for this afternoon. We still have a few minutes uh, before we do that. Uh, I would like uh, to, uh, I, I've heard the, there is a, a woman who was airline pilot at United Airlines. 
Yes, uh, we. There's one person who just retired, I believe, who's yes. with us today. Angie. 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 That's me. Yeah. Yes. Maybe oh. you can say a few words. <laughs> so, um, do you have uh, many uh, Black American uh, pilots in the United Airlines? Oh. Uh, no, we don't. Oh. I was um, the third African American female they hired. Okay. And I was the first African American who captained the triple seven airplane for them in the nation. You are so, oh, yeah. okay. because I yeah, just I was <laughs> did you I was see told those, that go ahead. Did you see I saw a TEDx from an American man who, who said there was seventy years between so you you were in 1991 captain no yes i was 1991 That's, and um very, i was uh, very, yeah i was told very by glad to meet you <laughs> yeah nice to meet you about the organization of black airline professionals they informed me that i was the first in the nation as a captain on the triple seven female mm -hmm. and um yeah wow. there's not many of us united probably has i think maybe 20 female mm -hmm. and at the time i didn't know bessie coleman when i was starting to fly it was just it wasn't in our history mm -hmm. i didn't find out about her i think until after i got all my license and and started flying on my own because there was no other women here the, and i was i wasn't military so i did it all on my own so, so you, there was no one to look up to for me you, you were captain in the united airlines Yes, I was a captain oh, okay. on the triple seven. Yeah, I, I spent have, there over thirty years with him. Oh, I have a friend, um, Helen Erskine. You know, Helen <laughs> Erskine. No, she she was no, uh, no, first officer. I don't. Okay, you. Are, uh, so uh, United Airlines have found out that they were, but not perfect. But the, the best, the best for hiring women, they they made uh, some. Uh, Air shows in uh, in uh, Denver to say that it for a long time ago that it could be good to hire uh, women in uh, all parts of the company. And when I met uh, Vanessa, who is here uh, today in Oshkosh, uh, the president of uh, United Airlines came landed in uh, Oshkosh uh, two years ago with a 787 and uh, female uh, crew mm -hmm. and. Uh, Right. All, all female in uh, passengers from the company inside, and he gave uh, five thousand right. dollars for scholarships to for uh, women for to to learn to fly. Yeah, Great. too long, too long. Okay. I was um actually interviewed in '89, but didn't get hired, and they didn't have, you know, they weren't hiring African Americans at that time. So <gasps> I had to go back and wow. uh, continue you know working building up my hours and then i just reapply so. but it's it's the same uh enfin, in france we have uh, too few uh black pilots also yeah. uh, it's really yeah. a sector uh, very uh, not a progressive sector and it, this must change uh, really and I, I met um, a, the first um, African uh, Cam from Cameroon uh, captain, and he, he was uh, in uh, the pilot school with uh, the first uh, airline pilot, French airline pilot lady. <laughs> they were together, and wow. they, they belong uh, very well together. And uh, mm -hmm. he said he learned a lot from uh, these uh, women uh, who helped him uh, good for uh, self-confidence etc <laughs> that's wonderful yeah. Yeah. thank you so christina i believe you had some statistics about the commercial airlines who hired the most women in the world and you said that air india was probably the first uh, yes uh it's it's very low uh, the average uh, in the world in 20, 2020 was only five percent and uh, the the bet the best uh, is uh, best rates are in uh, India. Uh, they have a 15 percent uh, average rate for women in aviation in airlines, and the one company, Indigo Airlines, has 30 percent uh, female. And also, Indian Airlines 
They are the, the, the unique uh, company in the world who put uh, as a chairman uh, a, a lady who was pilot and she lost her license due to health. And uh, as a chief pilot, a woman uh, is uh, the only company in the world. She's captain on triple uh, seven. Mm. And they, and they uh, do often all female crew and they uh, put a lot of, uh, in the media, they have uh, international um, advertisement for this. <laughs> well. well, thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, participating and uh, sticking with us. I think what this is more, more than just one inspiring event. I think uh, the fact that we're celebrating this 100 years to the day after Bessie Coleman earned her international private license it's more than symbolic. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's just, uh, it's great, great planning and great intelligence that we came yeah. together. So both uh, for the future. Beatrice, yes. can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can. Was, bonjour, I just wanted to uh, say a few things. Uh, Christine, yes. I look forward to working with everybody this beautiful, wonderful year we're going to have celebrating Bessie. It's good to see my fellow Sisters of the Skies uh, pilot there who just was on a minute. Congratulations on your retired, my sister. So I just wanted to give a little thing. I see you, some of you all, uh, Oliver, you had uh, Willa Brown on. Willa Brown was actually my mentor until she passed away. Uh, also uh, that I wanted to add is the Tuskegee Airmen also, they weren't just men, there were also black female Tuskegee Airmen women pilots. There were 15,000 and we are going to make sure they are going to get all their credit as well. They were pilots and nurse pilots and they trained some of the best of us. Uh, also out in Los Angeles, you had a lot of women pilots who were also, and I think Oliver, you were looking for the word uh, barnstorming. Those, that's what they did. And uh, so I just want to say thank you Thank you so much. Uh, I've gotten received letters and texts and everything from uh, Switzerland, from uh, China, from Africa, just because Bessie Coleman belongs to the world. I'm thrilled to be an aviator myself for, I knew Gigi's mother. Gigi's mother created uh, the Bessie Coleman Foundation, which a lot of us came to France in 1995. And now we're going to be coming and bringing the family this time. And uh, Gigi represents her family, just absolutely beautiful. So uh, I'm also related to uh, Emma Till and they've been calling me all morning to see how this is going. And uh, mm. this is also Juneteenth. And for the first time we have a holiday, we've always celebrated Juneteenth in Oklahoma, uh, where I'm from, Oklahoma City. So uh, I just wanted to say to you all, Beatrice, thank you so thank you. much. Welcome. Merci beaucoup. And we're looking forward to being with you and the Democrats uh, mm -hmm. abroad. Keep on voting. Keep on doing. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the words. Looking forward mm -hmm. to, to being with you. And Francois up there. Francois, thank you. It's right. good to finally see you versus emailing you for a whole <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sheila Chamberlain. We'd love to hear, see you in, in person next year. So uh, we'll all have to work towards that as well. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Back to you, Scott, if you have uh, anything else to say. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm so glad that we had such a, a, a good turnout. Um, and glad to see that we have people participating from literally from all from various different continents and uh from america we have people i think in sweden and germany um, wow. some people from all over the world who've participated in our event today and uh and i i'd like to uh thank janine especially janine for, for having that was me the idea, Lake friend, everyone. the idea of putting this together and all of the hard work that she did and reaching yes. out to all of our speakers today. That was me the said Lake so friend, again, everyone. Uh, thank you for you know Christine Here's and it. Francoise and.
I say hello from Lakefront. Okay, we have somebody who needs to turn off their mic. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. We'll we'll close we'll close now, and uh, we'll keep you in tune for next time. Yes, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you thank for you. Bessie's leadership and intelligence and resilience. Thank you all. Until next time. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you for to all the speakers. Now. Come to Thank the, the so GBC much, fundraiser. A bientôt. See you. A bientôt. A bientôt. Bye. 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 Yes, come to our fundraiser, please. Yes, there's a global caucus right now. We have afterwards. to get out the vote. We have yes. to get out the vote. Get out the vote. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. This is wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>